The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. And those questions of, where were you, Lord? Mm -hmm. if, you, if I'm reading in the word that you love me, that you care for me, that you're my shield, protector, provider, all of these things, my fortress, my strength, then why are my circumstances not matching up with what you're saying in the word? Through a decade of relentless trials, Nicole Jacobsmeyer learned that one of God's greatest gifts is to have more than we can handle. Next on Life Today. Welcome to Life Today. I'm Randy Robinson. Sheila Walsh is with me. Hey. And it's so great to have you. And you know, we're going to hit something that some of you really need to hear today because as you know, there are circumstances in life that are out of your control oftentimes, maybe some that are in your control, that have robbed you of your joy. And I gotta say, Sheila, I, I talked to our guest a few months ago online, and Nicole Jacobs Meyer just has one of those stories that it's difficult at times, but it really, I think it will help. So, Nicole, it is great to have you here in the studio Thank Life Today. Thank you so much. What an honor and privilege. So, I, the first question, I'll have the same question I ask you then, is the title of the book, because <laughs> it's not just restore your joy or find joy, it's take back yeah. your joy. There's, a, there's an active component to that. This book was birthed out of the most traumatic places of my life and the worst places, the most painful places, and really just my misunderstanding of the gospel and God's character and his love for me. I think when we go through pain, we always ask those questions. Why? Why me? Why now? Why is this happening? Is there purpose in it and it's really hard when you don't understand the full not even the gospel but this idea that you can have joy and suffering but there's a reason that there is something that is produced because of what we walk through and i didn't know that and so growing up in a christian home it took a lot for me to finally get there so taking it back has been over a decade of learning this. <laughs> I think it's interesting though, because my story in, in the beginning is very similar, very involved in the church, she involved in everything. And it doesn't always prepare you for the, re the harsh reality of life. Yeah. Was that your experience? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I got baptized in a Minnie Mouse swimsuit. I was <laughs> innocent life. Does I that mean, count to be in a yeah. Minnie Mouse swimsuit? <laughs> you know, prayed the sinner's prayer really early on. And I was just in a bubble and I was so thankful, so thankful for my upbringing. But you know, it wasn't until my early 20s that life and evil and sin reared its ugly head. Yeah. And that's when you, you have to know if you have a foundation on faith and the truth of the word and of God's character, or if it's going to be fleeting mm -hmm. and you start to realize, man, my faith has been really based on circumstances and what God does or doesn't allow in my life. Yeah, we, we use the phrase robbed of your joy. Yeah. And I think that's very accurate oftentimes, especially in your case. Mm -hmm. Tell the audience yeah. some of the things that the evil that just came against you that really should have robbed you of your joy in any yeah. natural sense would have. Happened. And it did. It completely it robbed did. me of my joy. Mm. And so in my early 20s, I went through a horrific experience and was raped. See, that's to me is like every woman's nightmare. That's yeah. like your worst nightmare. It was absolutely horrific. Mm. And the fact is that even my father came out a couple months prior to that, saying that he was living a double life. And so I had this compounded misunderstanding of who God was because not only did I have a bad representation in my earthly father, I now had been completely violated. And those questions of where were you, Lord? Mm -hmm. if, you, if I'm reading in the word that you love me, that you care for me, that you're my shield, protector, provider, all of these things, my fortress, my strength, then why are my circumstances not matching up with what you're saying in the word? And so I had a very difficult time coming out of that season and really wrestling with the Lord on all those painful topics because 
there's so much weight when you go through trauma and when you go through even just you think your family's this great Christian family and no dysfunction and you know all innocent and then that's completely shattered. And so it's just been it's been a complete journey of trying to take back this joy. And if God is calling us to have joy in suffering and to consider it joy when we go through trials mm -hmm. and to consider it a privilege, like it says in Philippians 129, That's to a, suffer for Christ, yeah. then I better figure out how to do this because he's not just going to call me to something that he can't give me the strength to do. Did that destroy your relationship with your father? It did. I immediately said, you're not going to walk me down the aisle. If I ever have kids and get married, you're never going to see him. I wanted, I wanted him to feel the burn, <laughs> no, <laughs> which is it. so sinful, of course, but I did. I wanted him to feel it and, and punish him immediately because I didn't believe that God could be that just God because I just went through that rape as well. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't see God in that way. So I wanted to take everything on myself, but I will say, our relationship now. My father and I have a restored relationship. Good. My That's... parents' marriage is restored and wow. God has done, oh, that that would go hours to share all the <laughs> details in that, which is phenomenal because it's the miracles. Wow. Is, is it fair to say that you had a bit of a reaction of, okay, my earthly father's a liar? Yeah. Okay. Did you have the temptation to think maybe my heavenly father's a liar? Yeah. I mean, I think I put all of those doubts and those questions that I had with my dad, are you really who you say you are, Lord? Sure, sure, sure. Like, are you really a faithful God? Mm -hmm. And are you really good? You know, because we read in Romans 8, 28, that God works together all things for the good of those who love him. But I loved him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I loved him with my whole heart. And yet, how does this, how can you reconcile yeah. these things? So I think that's it. You have to work these things out. It's part of working out your salvation. And that's just so important. I, I think it's okay to take that to God. Yeah. And I think, in fact, that's the best thing to do yes. rather than hide <laughs> it and run from him or, yeah. or whatever. What happened when you took that to him? Well, I think it took a lot of time to finally get to that place because I also had another set of trials that really made me doubt God again. Mm. And I had a miscarriage. We lost a baby through miscarriage. I was diagnosed with cancer and went through that whole journey and really, really struggled with severe depression. And so all of those things mm. made me relive in a completely different way, but relive those questions and doubts that I had all those years ago to get to those places of saying, I do trust you, Lord, with my complete life. I surrender. And it's that process of sanctification that was starting to work itself out in my life. But that was only three years ago. So it <laughs> takes a lifetime. <laughs> what, I mean, what do you do with the fact, because I get asked this a lot by women when I'm out on the road teaching, you know, if God is good and God is powerful, why didn't he stop this? How has your faith been shaped by the suffering that you have gone through. I was sitting in church a few years back, and this was before we moved, before cancer. But the pastor said, you know, all of you out there are thinking about all the hardest things you've walked through and asking God, why did you bring me through this? And he goes, you know what? You're asking the wrong question because the question should be, how can an all holy God have me, a sinner and so undeserving, even enter the kingdom of God, yeah. even enter heaven. And I, I was very taken aback at first. I was thinking, <laughs> yeah. boy, that's, that's, that's rude. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a lot. But you know, now that I think about it, it is so true. We um, didn't, he has given us everything already yeah. in his son. And we're missing that mark when it comes to joy in the entirety of the gospel, because he doesn't just sit up there and say, okay, she's going to go through this and her life's going to be awful. And this is what's going to happen. He's actually working on a huge scale that we can't see. The spirit is interceding for us. Jesus is walking with us. God has already gone before us and we can hold on to those major truths to know that he's working these things out and our good is not necessarily 
what God deems good. <laughs> mm. And a lot of times that's where I had to really reshift my focus on, you know what, it's not about the big houses and the perfect life and all the money in the world. It, it, that's not necessarily good. My good is pr being in me produce this growth and humility and obedience and discipline. That is good. Being made more like Christ is good. And that's what he was doing. So he was answering my prayers. He was answering all those prayers that when I asked, Lord, make me more like yourself, make mm. me more like your son. And he was answering those, but it was through pain and it came wow. at such a great cost. Wow. How did it impact your husband watching his wife miscarry? Oh. And I sometimes think people forget how hard that is on the father as well yeah. as the mother and then watching his wife go through cancer. He is the strongest person I know oh, wow. <laughs> and the best person I know, but I think God just gave him a supernatural strength to get through all of that because we had the miscarriage and then it was just shortly after that I was diagnosed with cancer. And then it was only 10 days later that we moved across the country oh my to, gosh. so that he could start his intern year of pediatric residency. So we had this like bam, 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 all right in a row. And he did it with such strength and grace that mm. that is, that is the Lord. You mm. can't look at that and say, oh, you're so strong and you're just so yeah. great. I mean, that is, the divine God that we serve in that man. <laughs> and I, I know that it, it has hit him so hard, but I know that we also have four kids and we have to focus on with, you know, what's right in front of us and be honest and try to be joyful with them. <laughs> uh, well, let me ask you about that, about your children. What do you, what do you want them to see in you? Maybe when they read your book one day. Oh man, I just hope they see both of our strength, my husband and I, the strength that it only comes from the Lord. And honestly, just this authenticity that we have before the Lord of being humble and honest and knowing that we don't deserve all these blessings that we have yeah. and that life is so hard, but that we can get through it because we have Christ. Yeah. And if they can just know that God is their rock, regardless of what happens, and they can see that played out in my husband and I's life, then I think that that's the best thing we can do is always push them to the yeah. Lord. Yeah. One yeah. of the things I loved about your book was the way that you kind of unpack the reality, like a, a theology of, of joy and suffering coexisting. Mm -hmm. yeah. I remember when my mother-in-law was in the final stages of cancer and we were really grief stricken. She had wanted God to heal her and, she, and it was clear that his healing was taking her home. And so I'm, I'm sitting with her in her bed, you know, and then out the window, I see my son who at that point was four talking to the neighborhood cat. I mean, not just talking to him, I mean, giving him an entire <laughs> scenario of how the next few days were gonna go. And I thought this is just, how, it's like here, is death and here is life and God is in both places. Yes. When you, um, you were gonna go on a mission trip and then yes. you thought, you know, what made you think you were not worthy to do that? So I got invited to go to our women's director's office who was also a part of missions. And this was right after my dad came out with everything, mm -hmm. right after the rape, it was just obviously the most broken place that I was. And she called me into her office. I had no idea why I thought I was in trouble or something because <laughs> I wasn't showing up like normal. And I got there and she asked me if I would lead the Nepal missions trip that summer that was in the next year. And I immediately said, no, I mean, look at me, I'm a wreck. I don't even know if I love God at this point because I was so I was just doubting and the questions and anger. Devastating. Yeah, yeah, and just the brokenness was so prevalent in my life at that point. And so what she said though, really changed the trajectory of my life because she said, even though I said all this stuff about how <laughs> horrible my life had been, she goes, this is exactly why I want you to lead the trip wow. because you have nothing to offer. You are weak, <laughs> you've got nothing, you are broken. And yet that is, what, that is what God does, is he's going to showcase his glory, his strength, his power, and you're, you're gonna leave this team. <laughs> and I was like, oh boy, maybe I need to pray about this. <laughs> so, but I ended up going and I met my husband shortly after that, mm -hmm. not on the trip or anything, but just shortly after. To, so to see what God did through that yeah. and the healing 
and he didn't have to. And that's why I always go back to that is he didn't have to do that, but he did. He didn't have to give me my husband, but he did. He didn't have to heal and forgive and send his son and give added blessings in my life, but he did. And he does, and he does for all of us if we, you know, if we look around and actually see. Yeah, because when you are hurting, when you're maybe doubting, when you're suffering, you talk about how serving others helps to bring that joy back. So you go on a missions trip at your lowest of low points to serve others. How, how, what do people need to know about how critical that is when you're at that point where you can't see past your own pain? Mm -hmm. I think just going to Nepal helped me realize how big of a God we serve mm -hmm. and how there's an overarching story that I get to be a part of that he is using all of us and we are just his kids and hopefully his vessels. And to think that all of these people that I was coming in contact with had so much trauma and so much pain yeah. and so much going on. And that doesn't dismiss what I walked through or what anyone goes through. It just makes you open your eyes to see that you're not alone. Mm -hmm. And when you get outside of yourself and you see other people and meet them where they're at, it makes you feel less alone and it makes you almost have this servant heart that yeah. you are woe is me and sad and depressed as a, any trauma victim sure, sure, is. Sure. But being able to serve in that way, you just see a different light of people and what the Lord is doing. Change your perspective. Yeah. And honestly, when I think of my own life, I think of the people that have impacted me the most are people who've suffered a lot. Yes. I'm sure it changed how you related to the people that you met in yes. Nepal. It's, the, it's just that God is a redeemer of yes. everything. Yes, he is. When people um, finish your book, what's your prayer that they would take from it? There was one thing. Oh man, if there's one, I would say that they would understand the true character of God. And if that means that they need to repent and finally see who they are and their place at the foot of the cross and God and his authority and sovereignty, that's where they need to go. But if it's, if it's just being angry at God because of the pain that they're walking through, I just pray that people don't get mad at him, but they see how God uses us and how we can be vessels of joy and blessing and love and um, just all these beautiful things because of what we've walked through, that he's going to use that and that there is purpose, that he's not going to waste all this pain that we're going through and that we can partner with him in that yeah. and actually work through and work towards a real relationship with him. And honestly, if you are angry with God, come to him with that too. Mm -hmm. I've discovered that there's no better place to come, no matter what you're going through. Tell God the truth. And I think the more you pour out your pain, the more space you make for grace. And that's one of the things that we would love to ask you to partner with us today. There are some people, um, 20 different countries around the world that we, we work in, and their very most basic need is to be able to say to their child, here's some clean water. Watch this, and then we'll tell you how you can help. This heat, this oppressive heat, it drains you of energy, just like it robs this ground of water. What's left is often a death sentence. These women, girls, so young, I watched them again and again drawing from their only source within miles. Twelve-year-old Tulsi, what a precious girl, born into such adversity, into impossible circumstances beyond her control. We all have a role to play and I feel especially burdened by mine because as I look around at these scenes before me, I'm so conflicted with how to adequately bring their stories to life, their struggle for the most basic of necessities. For if I can't help you see it, feel it, how can your heart know how to respond? 
a death sentence. That's what I'm holding in my hand. Dear God, you came to make all things new. Beauty for ashes, a new heart from death to life. Father, please, I know you see her. Bring Tulsi life-giving water. Take away this death sentence. You know, watching that, I, I so relate to that agony that Tammy feels watching what these children have to drink, literally a death sentence in a bottle. And as a mom, I can't imagine what it's like every single day knowing that the very thing you're giving your child might be the very thing that would put their name on that certificate. It's, it's a devastating situation. And yet, what I also discovered on my first few trips is that we can do something about it. And that's what I love about the, the hearts of James and Betty when they began this mission so many years ago, their commitment to drill water wells. And it's our prayer this year that we will drill 350 wells in 20 countries. And if you could see, I mean, if I could take you with me and you could see the difference, you know, to what were these moms and the horrible, filthy water, that's all that's available for hundreds of miles. And then you get back in the truck and you go to another village where we've been able to drill a well. And the difference is night and day, death and life. And so that's what we're asking you. Would you help us now to, to drill wells that we need to, so that that darling mom doesn't worry about losing that precious little girl that Tammy was talking about. Have you noticed when you've been overseas how many of these women, these mothers that have lost children, have some kind of faith? I know, it blows me away. Yeah, and yeah. sometimes they're not sure who it is they have faith in, but they're praying to an invisible God and they need a visible solution. We are that visible solution. When you partner with us and we show up and we say, in the name of Jesus Christ, we put a name to that God. And we say, we bring you a cup of water. And Jesus says, when we do that, we will not be unnoticed by him. There is a reward. We're asking you to help us meet the practical needs of so many people around the world. As Sheila said, 20 nations this year. Our goal is 350 wells. I say over 350 wells because I wanna go right past that, but we need your support to do it. Here's how it breaks down. A gift of $48 today will provide clean drinking water for a lifetime for 10 people. A gift of $144 would provide that same water for 30 people. Some of you can provide a well. $4,800 will provide a well, and it will change the lives of many. Uh, on average, about a thousand people, but let's just say that you will make a huge difference in people's lives. Some of you can partner maybe, provide half a well, go in with others. Whatever you can do, take a moment and say, Lord, what would you have me do today? Because when we come together in Jesus' name, these people will experience the God that they have been praying to for life. That's what we want you to give them today, water for life. Go to the phones, go online, give the best gift you can. Every day, thousands of lives are lost to waterborne disease, and nearly half of those are children under the age of five. Through Mission Water for Life, you can give mothers hope and children a future as we provide clean, life-giving water for thousands of children and their families before it's too late. With your gift today, you can help drill and establish 350 water wells this year. Your gift of $24 will help provide clean water for five children. A gift of $48 will help provide for 10. $72 will provide for 15 and $144 will help provide life-giving water for 30 people for a lifetime. With a gift of any amount, we'll send you The Birthright. This book is a liberating and life-changing celebration of your birthright as a child of the King. Discover the joy of coming home to your father's warm embrace. 
With your gift of $100 or more, we'll also send you the Moments with Him mug set. These two beautifully crafted coffee mugs feature scripture on the side, the perfect way to start your day and reflect on the goodness of God. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,200 to help provide water for 250 people or a gift of $4,800 to help sponsor a complete well and request our new inspiring bronze sculpture, Consider the Birds, inspired by Jesus' words in Matthew 6, 26. Please call, write, or make your gift online today. I'm here on the beautiful continent of Africa. And in this village, like so many other villages that I have been to, there are children dying all the time simply because there is no clean water source. But the situation here is dire. I've talked to so many mothers since I've been here who've buried one, two. One mother has buried three children simply because they have no clean water source. There's hand dug wells, but I've looked at the water. It's filthy, but it doesn't have to happen. When we drill a fresh water well, it goes deep down to water that will not run out during the dry season like we have here. It will be sustainable. It's sealed in, the water's fresh. And I wanna thank our partners for what you've done, but there's so much more that we need to do. Let's change this in Jesus' name and bring a cup of water, clean water, water for life in the name of Christ. I pray you are going online or going to the phone right now, making the best gift you can. We can give life. I want to mention that you can go to NicoleJacobsMeyer.com, NicoleJacobsMeyer.com. Find out more about the book. Of course, you can get the book wherever you get books. Thank you so much for sharing, for being so open. You're blessing people. We appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, beautiful, transparent book. And we thank you. And we thank you. <laughs> and we will see you next time here on Life Today. Stay connected with Life Today through your favorite social media. Get access to exclusive content and news from all of the outreaches of life. Just search Life Today and you'll be connected to exciting shows featuring your favorite guests. Never miss a moment to get inspired, get involved, and get the best of life anytime, anywhere. Life Today is always on. Subscribe, follow, like, and get the Life Today social media experience. Tomorrow on Life Today, Tony Collier helps us name and embrace our brokenness in light of God's tenderness. Are you brave enough to be broken? Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.